everybody and big welcome to a CDHTV gameplay video we're gonna follow my solo perspective playing 11 the mage and Jim but the big focus here is Jim with the time sieve artifact tap it sacrifice five artifacts we can create those five artifacts from token clues by Jim and a lot of hate bears we're going up against Daihada the Mardu commander with Doxaig Extortionist, there it is, and a new white cool upgrade enchantment. Metallic, ah, very hard thing to pronounce, but it's basically a form of Cloudstone Curio variant. With us also, we have Rhetoric playing Urmisphere Manifest, a Demir Voltron kind of ish commander with some milling interaction, but also if you generate infinite mana with Hullbreaker Horror, you can mill out all of your opponents. And finally, but Def, not least, we have Def Magic with us, who has his own YouTube channel where he also uploads gameplay videos. If you want to take a look at that kind of sort with a different variant than mine, he's playing Sonic Wave, and for some reason, we can't see that card yet here on Moxfield, but yeah. Well, here we go. Really weird thing. You're basically creating tokens when you're casting odd or even spell, and then you flip it, and when token deals damage to the player, you draw a card, so there's some form of Token production card draw value there in Esper Color Identities. But other than that, it's a very clean and simple Esper deck. But now, let's start the match and take a look at my opening hand. Turn 1 Rhystic is always a turn 1 Rhystic. We are 100% keeping this hand. Land, Lotus Petal, Pass, turn 2, Rhystic Study. That's always gonna turn into something good. We're also the starting player, so I'm super happy about that. Starting off, drawing a card. I'm gonna play a Lotus Petal. I'm gonna play a Scalding Tarn. I'm gonna sacrifice the Scalding Tarn. Find a Volcanic Island and uh, pass the turn. I have to admit that I'm like super tempted at casting turn 1 Grenzo, but don't do that. Don't. Rhystic Study turn 2 is much better. From Jason Spiller, we have an Imperial Seal. I'm guessing he's gonna find a Doxite with that. Ten turn goes to Red Horic. Oh, a Sol Ring. A Lotus Petal. And then a turn goes to Death. Oh, his attacks and probably me. Here we go. This is my cool hand. I didn't have that much to reveal. Like, Rhystic's coming up and then Unwell Breach. And that's it. And they're gonna see the Rhystic study soon anyway. What is really good though, is that it didn't really see a stack package here. So they're still in the thought process that I might be on a fast combo ad nauseum game plan. What is that? 1-1 one, one fly, whenever these combat to a play, each player puts a top card of the library into the grid. Mm, okay. Then turn goes to me. Draw a card. I'm gonna play a play toe. I'm gonna cast a mana crypt. I'm gonna cast a Rhystic Study. I'm gonna sacrifice the pedal and pay one red and cast Grenzo Havoc Racer. And uh, then I pass the turn. So we're setting up for a really good, like, value engine mechanic here. Which is good because we kind of emptied our hand. Jason cast a material excavation and pays for my rhystic study. And then he passes the turn. So we go to Rhetoric. Yeah, there we go. Swamp. Ooh, Planner Void. I like that. Like, I don't care. So this is a card that does... Whenever a card goes into a graveyard from play, not a resting piece, it will go to exile instead. Now, everyone thinks that I'm lost on this underwater beach plan. And, like... I have bre breached there for value, so they might think I'm interacted with here. You pay for my Rhystic study. Oh well. I suddenly really like the Gate Taxion probe here. Like, it feels like they think them on this breach plan and it they are changing their game plan because what they thought i had in my hand suddenly i really liked my opening a lot but here we go death's turn that's an arcade signet we'll draw a card and draw a dranite magistrate i do like that they haven't gotten their commanders out in play yet and they're wait a minute all of their commanders are great in play i'll untap and draw a card bird and catacomb i will sacrifice that immediately it goes to exile i'll find a bad land i will attack at uh, rhetoric with my grenzo for two damage I'll exile the top of part of the library. We flip into a brainstorm. Yeah, pretty good. I'll cast a Dranite Magistrate, floating a colorless mana. And with that colorless mana, I will cast the brainstorm. Okay, so we drew a bunch of lands here. We don't need this many lands. We put one land back and we put that land back, and then we're good. This game really feels like it's going my way. Cast a Fellow Stone and pay for Rhystic Study. Like, even if they pay, Rhystic Study is doing some work, it's slowing them down, which is supposed what it which is what it's supposed to do. Cause a fatal slowing dude 
looting, so now I draw two cards, one card. It's too rhetoric. Place a land, Rax the Bloodstained Mire, finds an Underground Sea. And here we go to Death's turn. I think the Trenet Magistrate did some real work on uh, these guys. Apparently Death did nothing on his turn, just drawing a card and passing immediately. That's uh, honestly great. So untap and draw a card. I take some damage from the Mana Crypt. So we drew the planes that we put on top of Library from the Brainstorm. Death, I'm attacking you with my two creatures, dealing three damage total. Flipping two cards. Got a low oh, ledger shredder and a swamp. Nice. So I'm gonna play Scrubland and then cast Jim, Chief Hopper. Then I'm gonna tap two and cast Ledger Shredder. I will then pass the turn. So we are we are in a super value train right now. No interact. Oh, well, we could draw into Force of Will with Rhystic Study here. Jason calls me hook for free. Board wiping Earth. So I will draw a card for Rhystic. And then I have uh, no interaction to that. My three cool creatures will all die and go to exile. So not that great anymore. But still, we have a gym in play. And I mean, it's bound to happen sooner or later. But that's honestly the big weakness to these kinds of decks that there are board wipes here and there. You, you just have to be, like live with it. Sadly, we can't use Undual Breach to rebuild Dryad Magistrate. I think Dryad Magistrate was really good in this game. Rhetoric costs fast as hideous. <laughs> fast as hideous laughter. I draw a card from that. I draw Op Agent. But uh, Death costs a Swan Song, counterspelling that. Death untaps and uh, draws a card. And then he instantly passes the turn. That's sad. Tails, no damage. So I will untap and draw a card. We draw Oswald Fiddlebender, which is great because we can use that to find our time. Sieve, so which is perfect here. I'm gonna play a land, Tundra. I'm attacking with uh, Jim at uh, Rhetoric for damage total, creating a clue. He blocks with his bird, but I still get the clue. I will cast Sig River Cutthroat, and then I will uh, pass the turn. So I don't want to cast Oswald Fiddlebender yet because I don't have the creature count mass I need yet. I'm still like rebuilding towards it. I'm like, off in it soon in place. We have three creatures, then we have Oswald four, so we're getting there soon. Oxide from Jason. He's paying one for it. Well, in response, I'm gonna crack this clue and draw a card. I'll draw a Sanctum Prelate from Re Study. Rhetoric is being super responsible and cracks the Lotus Petal. Oh, wait, he's copying the trigger. That's kind of cool. He's gonna copy the Dockside ability. This is honestly a super interesting uh, way to play. I draw a card because of Rhystic Study. It's a great card to draw. Costs a bounce spell to reduce the Dockside uh, treasure count here. Death is so responsible this game. He's costing interaction after interaction. He also pays for my Rhystic Study. Super impressed. Even though he's like super interactive here, doesn't seem to be doing good. Like his mana count is really low and his hand size is growing small too. Kind of sad even though he's playing like doing some really good work on this board state. Rhetoric gains five treasures, which is also going to increase the count for Jason's potential treasures too. And in the difference between Death being super responsive, Rhetoric doesn't crack a single treasure. So this in the end double the amount of treasures Jason just got. I don't like this Rhetoric. Hans, would you shut up? I can't hear myself think while you're talking during this entire game. Jason recalls Merciless Excavation that was bounced back to his hand, and it pays for the Rhystic Study as well. So currently Jason can win with infinite mana. So in response to that enchantment still being on the stack, I'm gonna cast a Sword to Plowshare on the Dockside Extortionist here, and that stops uh, Jason from potentially comboing off and winning this turn. And because of the planner, one black mana enchantment, it goes to exile, so it won't come back. Then Jason cast Teshada. No, sorry, Dihada, Binder of Wills. It decreases its ability, it wills to top four, and creates three more treasures. And then he plays the Heart of Kiran. Rhetoric untaps and draws a card. And now that uh, Dranite is gone, here we have Umris Fear Manifest. I was planning to use the Sword to Plowshare on that thing, but we just had to use it on the dockside here. So this is a big creature. All right, I am the target. We reveal until we hit the land. Malcolm. And I wouldn't foot it, so it stopped. I don't really care about Malcolm, so that was actually kind of good for me. But here, turn goes to death. Draws a card. Will it draw land? Will it be active in this game again? And there we go. Bloodstained Mire. Tracks the Bloodstained Mire. But then he actually has passed the turn to me. I take three damage for the Mana Crypt. Untap and draw a card. I'm gonna go to combat with Jim and my Sig straight at death. The only one that uh, can't block and kill them. And I create two clues. 
I'm gonna play an Ancient Tomb. I'm gonna play an Oswald Fiddlebender, floating a colorless on the mana crypt, and using that mana crypt to cast a Sanctum Prelate. I will say the mana value of 1 on Sanctum Prelate, and then I will pass the turn. You remove a loyalty counter to make part of Kieran into a creature. He casts a Dolphy Voidwalker, so Graveyards is super shut down. He goes to combat and swings four in there at Rhetoric, who is currently at 31 now. And then he passes turn to Rhetoric. He draws a card, plays a swamp. His commander is currently at 2020, so it's not commander damage lethal yet, but like super soon. And then he casts Praetor's Grasp on me. He's not paying for Istic Study. We're drawing a card. The Troll Trophy of White Walk. But I'm gonna respond with a Deflecting Swat, changing the target to Jason. I don't want you to look at my deck. Now we could be fancy and cast Opposition Agent, but Opposition Agent reads, while an opponent search their library, which Jason, Jason isn't, Rhetoric is searching his library. But I was honestly a little bit scared he would go through and just find Time Sieve here, and that would make me super sad. Oh no, this was maybe bad. He takes the Toxic Deluge. Sadness. Super great board wipe. I don't think you can see it in this glare, but that's a Toxic Deluge removed from... Oh no, wait. He can actually cast it as well this turn. Oh no, he can do it this turn! Oh no. This might be GG from nowhere. He pays 5 life to the board wipe. And he also pays for the Heuristic Study. So we need to rebuild a second time. Oh, and he goes to combat and goes at death. Which really surprised me. I thought it was gonna go for me. He can't kill Jason. And there we go. Re Death saves himself with a Oppo agent to block the big, big thing. Doesn't pay for Ristic, so I draw a card. And the Oppo agent dies. Stands straight in the way of that big nightmare thing. I would have survived too. I would have done the same. And then turns goes to Death. Like, Death is having a horrible game here, I think. Just interacting with everybody, being set back so much, and then have to sand back, throw the Oppo agent under the bus. So I guess means he's gonna win anyway. And he calls his commander, the sound way, giving me a card draw. Command tower, the backsided tape, which means that he can cast non-odd and even spells and create tokens. And then he passes a turn. No damage from mana crypts. I'm tap and draw a card. I'm gonna play command tower and land drop. I'm gonna cast an Esper Sentinel. I'm gonna cast a Chief Jim Hopper again. And then I'm gonna pass the turn. I'm gonna discard an Underworld Breach to exile. So we're kind of back in the game, I guess. Or will, will soon be. But Jason is sitting in a pretty good board state himself here. Getting another land into play. He does the same trick again. Make Kieran into a creature. giving that cre Making that vehicle into a 4-4 lifelink flying indestructible. And he punches Rhetoric for 4 damage. Bonk! And then he caused Braids, a Risen Nightmare. He goes to his end step and sacrifice an enchantment. Because Doxel is exiled. So we have to sacrifice enchantments. Otherwise he draws two cards and we lose two life. I'm never sacrificing Risen Study for this. So no one sacrifices sacrifice anything he draws three cards so rhetoric untaps and we go to a very scary turn cause an artifact he pays for Istic, but it doesn't pay for espel i draw one card then death cause fierce guardianship not paying for my things but also triggering his cassette thing so i draw two cards <laughs> i draw my fierce guardianship and a ring mare like that he <laughs> ravage eject <laughs> and creates that token and a sound way sonic flips back oh it's a death touch creature so he oh no this means that the rhetoric's gonna attack at me oh oh well so the big creature is coming my way i guess i'm putting uh else percent in front of the bus and this is a big bus the turn goes to death. He attacks at Dihada with his uh, menace death touch guy. And Dihada goes down to one. And then he calls the very master of time. Not paying for my heuristic study. I draw deafening silence. Eh. So I could honestly counterspell this with fierce guardianship. But I think that... Should I? Should we interact with this? I think we can let it resolve honestly. And looking at the table politics, it sounds like they are scheming to kill Jason with this. Like they're gonna phase out the indestructible blocker. And then the nightmare is gonna super smash Jason's face. Face. And then the turn goes to me. Draw a card. Take free damage. My mana crypt is killing me. It's the rainforest. Sacrifice it. Finding an underground sea. Combat. Jim is going at rhetoric. I create a clue. I will cast a Vryn Wingmare. Death activates the fairy. Draw a card in response. I will cast a Dolphy Voidwalker. And then I pass the turn. Discarding an island and a deafening silence. 
the Harder dies to her own ability, taps 7 mana, and recasts the Harder. And he pays for Rhystic Study. He boosts on Heart of Kiran again, the same thing as before, making it indestructible. He swings at Teferi, but in response, uh, Death will phase out uh, the Heart of Kiran. And then we go to the end step where Braids will trigger, and he sacrifices a treasure. He draws two cards, and everyone but Rhetoric loses two life. The reason I'm not sacrificing anything here is because I plan to potentially win on my turn if my Tainted Pact is lucky. And Rhetoric costs Odd Nauseum or Sad Osnium. I draw a card because of Rhystic Study. Do we interact with this? Like, he's on 15 life. I think we let this one fly. We're be greedy, but... Like, we have a silence. We have some cool interaction. First, it hits Bray. I think I don't think this is a threat. Like, this life total's a little bit too low here. Technomancer. He's at 8 now. Our King Sing is at 6 life. I think this is a suicide. Oh, well, good attempt. A lower stone is at 4 life. And then he, he stops. That was so sad. So we start at 15. He's down to 4. 4 card. Ouch. I don't know if he can actually even attack. Because I just attack him with my gym and he's dead. He's attacking at Jason with his nightmare. And the braids die. It's a very interesting Voltron commander with like interaction in exiling opponents, but yeah, I don't know. He cost mana vault, not paying for heuristic, so I draw a card. Swamp. Oh well. And here we have Ruthless Technomancer. Def activates his commander. No, oh, so he's Planeswalker, draws a card and discards a card. So here's a really cool synergy. Ruthless Technomancer's ETB will sacrifice his commander and gains treasures equal to that creature's power, which is an enormous amount right now, which means that he ultimately gets 38 treasures. And suddenly this commander looks pretty interesting. Cause an arcane signet, he costs Felwar Stone, paying for everything, he costs braids. Then he goes to his end step and sacrifices one of his treasures to braids. I will sacrifice my mana crypt. No, I will sacrifice a clue. Basically, he draws one card and the death uh, loses two life. He uses the fairy to draw a card and discard a card, which takes the fairy up to four. Discards Dolphy Voidwalker. He attacks with his token at Jason. <gasps> he got diabolic intent. Here we go. Finally. I have a response. I'm going to cast Oppo Agent. So this means that. My Oppo Agent resolves, then Diabolic Intent is still on stack, Rhetoric costs Oppo Agent, and because of like a timestamp thing, Rhetoric is the one that searches his library instead, not me. The plan here was to take Fasa's Oracle, and I play Tainted Pact just for a, as a tutor here. So my win is getting delayed again, probably, because now Rhetoric is gonna find Boardwipe interaction number three, I think, because he needs to survive, he's like on free life, so obviously needs to get rid of creatures in a way but here after grabbing a board wipe swirling mist turn goes to me before we go to my turn i want to cast a tainted pact i will start to flip alia no Ardmisa, no grand abolisher no grand arbiter augustine no face breaker hush bringer Dockside, pack, no, wandering, toxiril the corrosive. Hmm. So the plan here is to dig until we have the time sieve. I have currently 46 cards remaining in my library, but this is a creature that will solve close to all problems and win anyway, eventually. Like their interaction here and there. I honestly think we're just gonna go for this and try to go for the beatdown plan instead because, like, I have a fierce scholarship, but I have a feeling there might be more interaction here, and I could dig so low that I suddenly make. Maybe I have five cards remaining in the library, and I can't win with infinite turns anyway. So I'm gonna put the Toxir the Corrosive into my hand. Untap and draw a card. We just drew a great card versus uh, Rhetoric here. This is good. Play a Swamp. I'm gonna cast Kambal. I'm gonna cast Toxril the Corrosive. Wanna go to combat? Chief Jim Hopper is go. Jim is going at Jason. Offy Voidwalker is going at Rhetoric, and Ring Wingmare is going at the Fairy Planeswalker. Five Rhetoric cast the. Uh, Remove face out creature spell targeting Kambal, Soundway, Dolphy, and it takes Toxril. I'm gonna respond to that with a Fierce Guardian ship. But in response, my the Fierce Guardian ship, Jason costs Deflecting Swat. So my Fierce Guardian ship does not happen, and those things are phased out. I still create one, two, three clues. But then I pass the turn. So on Jason's turn, he is making that uh, Heart of Kieran into a creature and swings it at Rhetoric, who doesn't have a flyer. So Rhetoric dies. He was he knew he was gonna die when he caused that uh, board wipe spell. But you know you should still like play to your outs and hope Jason wants him to stay alive. But Jason wanted him to die. But yeah, Rhetoric is dead. He's casting Tear on Rhystic Study. Rhystic Study is destroyed. And then he caused a Wheel of Fortune. 
But let's see here what we draw. Seven new cards. Oh, an Imperial Seal. There we go. Yeah, we win, next, we win on next turn. He costs a Lotus Petal by paying one for the Ring Wingmare. Yeah, past turn there. And in the end of the turn, Death will obviously just activate Teferi and draw a card. And discard a Dark Deal. Still in the end of turn, he swords the Plowshare's Move Ring Wingmare. Hmm. That happens. It goes to Exile. I gain two life. We go to Death's turn. Shock a Water Grave into play. A Mox Diamond. Increase Teferi by drawing to draw a card. Discard a Talisman. Four mana so far. And we spring... <laughs> I kind of want to keep my hand. <laughs> so that was annoying. Let's draw seven more. We're in a big board wipe wheel game here. Wait a minute. Drop Pyroblast. Then he attacks with Sonic Wave at me. I'm going to take five damage to the face. In response, my Ring Wing Mirror dead, so I can cast this Pyroblast on Teferi. And Jason casts the Vampiric Tutor. Then Death casts Winds of Rebuke on Heart of Kirin. And then everyone mills two cards, including the card that Jason tutored for. Great interaction there. I'm gonna discard a Mammonic Betrayal and a Red Elemental Blast from the Winds of Rebuke. Can we please draw time? See. <laughs> Interaction to the maximum. Well, we have a bunch of clues we can crack. We have 22 cards remaining in the library. I mean, time sieve taking five turns usually is enough anyway, so we should be fine, but I'm like, why am I not winning this game yet? Cost Mystical Tutor. I take damage from the Mana Crypt, untap. Now I have a really tiny board state, but everything phases back in, so now we have a really big board state. Land Drop, City of Brass. I want to go to Combat. Jim, Oppo, Kambal, and Toxrill. Jim at uh, the Hada, and everything rest at Death's base. I will generate four clues. I will activate Duffy Voidwalker, sacrificing it to cause Diabolic Intent. Sacrificing Kambal. I'm searching out a cool card and casting that cool card. There we go. Time sieve on the stack. Tap it, sacrifice, five treasures, take an extra turn. Then I'm gonna cast Invala, Keeper of Silence, and activate this, sacrificing Mana Crypt because I could accidentally die to it. And three treasure, four clues. Take activating Time Sieve to take an extra turn. Then untap everything and draw. Oh, here we go. Cast the uh, Dem Demonic Tutor. I'll find a Talia and cast it now with five creatures exactly and Jim and 18 cards remaining in my library and I don't need to draw more than eight, one card so I can have 18 turns to kill you guys. My enormous board state. I win! Took some time, a lot of interaction, lots of free board wipes, tons of wheels and someone uh, interacted with an op agent against me.